Anyway, <laughs> friggin' hell, that's a bit of a dusty ball. <coughs> Don't use ashes, that. <coughs> anyway, we thought we'd come down here and get the girls out of the scrub because we've had a bit of a look through and they don't seem to have any diseases. So we thought we'll take them back to the farm because the trees are blossoming. They might as well help out and get a bit of that in them. And um, then we're gonna put them into a hive later on when it warms up a bit. It's still a bit chilly here at the minute. We actually, as you would have remembered, we actually had a sheet with the last episode, but that was in the washing machine. So I was past the farm and found this bit of hessian. And I was just thinking, isn't that, do you reckon that is how they invented sails back in the day? You know, when they would have been rolling up some bloody tarp or something and it took off. And they would have gone, shit, let's harvest the, harvest the power of the wind. And that's crazy shit when you think about where we went around the world in sailboats. I mean, my God, they were pretty clever. Anyway, we thought we'd just chuck this over the top. See if we can get these ladies organised into a bit more of a safer box. Hello, hello. There we go. It's not ideal for a migratory beekeeping project, but anyway, I thought I'd do this when I had some mussels with me, because I thought about coming and getting them last week, but anyway, you might be gonna, might as well come along for the ride and see what's going on. So I grabbed this, this is what they used to call a bit of old bloody um, hessian, that they used to dry the sultanas on. Back in the day, they'd lay it out on the ground and they'd put all the sultanas out on it. If they didn't have a rack, or if this was the extra bit that didn't fit on the rack, and we're, we're getting old school, we've got the old bloody sultana dry and we've got the sweat box that the sultanas would have been in, so shit, look at us go. This is, what do they call that? Repurposing. Or, oh, I can't have the pincers joke again, can I? <laughs> Here we go. Just asking my friendly cameraman whether we'd actually remembered to bring a rope. Because <sighs> we're, we're in a different vehicle, so that's this could be fun. But we'll just have a bit of a rummage and see whether the wife's actually got some shit in her own car. <laughs> have a look at this. We've got some ocker straps. Oh, we've even got a tie me down thing. How does that work? This is a bit snazzy. I think we might just use it as a tie down. Don't tell her. How good is she getting all this shit organised? She's a, like a stopgap between all the crap that I forget. That's why we're life partners. Thanks, hun. We better get moving because apparently when, when we're vibrating along, they'll um, stay all clustered together because they get a bit excited. Of course, as soon as you stop moving, then it'll woof, like friggin' everywhere. <laughs> Hope we get some nice weather for the blossom today. It's been pretty bloody miserable here in the Riverland. Oh, I reckon if we were in a bit higher rainfall zone, we would have snowed the other day. It was that bloody cold. The only thing we ever get is hailstones, though, which is pretty crazy. We don't want them. Yes, yes, it's all right in there. We're sorry. We're going to take you to a nice home, and we'll put you in the, in the shelter, and then we'll give you a fancy box to live in. How's that? They said, yes, please. <laughs> Everybody. Just remind me, I've got to put the shit back in this box, otherwise you'll find it and I'll be in all sorts of strife. <laughs> or when next time I want to borrow it, it won't be there. Oh. 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 We've just spied something in the tree over here. Check this shit out. So, we thought we'd have a bit of a look. Remember last time we were down here, I made this little bit of a feeding machine for the ladies? And you can see, actually, it's done pretty good. It's got a little bit of the... It's got that hard crust that it always gets. Like if, so they've actually eaten that up. So they must have found it. There's no dead bees in there. But we'll leave it on this tree because you never know, there might be some natives that are here that could nibble on it. But that's pretty groovy. That might even have, might even have worked. <sighs> Bit makeshift, but all good. <laughs> right, let's get this, let the, the little darlings home. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. That was a bit of an adventure, wasn't it? Ah, oh, poor little darlings. They're not sure what the hell happened. I thought it was really interesting though. I was just checking them out a minute ago. And um, like as bee, bee farmers, as we bee farms, apiaries, like we try to um, install the, the foundation comb so as they'll breed bigger bees. But I've just noticed in the wild, it's kind of weird because you get 
Like these girls are actually quite large. And some of the other ones I've got that have gone a bit feral that we've collected are quite small. So I'm not sure whether there's actually strains of bees that are different sizes. Does anybody write in anymore or is it just sending emails? <laughs> Send them to John. <laughs> No, anyway, it's on emails. I love you guys that send emails in. It's really cool. I quite enjoy that. Like we got a bit of feedback going on. And yeah, cheers for all you guys watching. And oh, double cheers for the dudes that are on Patreon supporting us. That's bloody awesome. Bloody bush bee man, I tell you what. Fuck me dead. I was wondering why it was a bit hard to back in here. We're, we're having a bit of a push up. Proud just a little bit of resistance from this tin. Shit, I wonder which. That must have been on the trailer. We were just reversing in here to put the bees in the shed here because they're in a bit of a weird ass box and I thought we can just go here and do a bit of pollination. And I'm thinking, shit, it got really hard to back down the track and I, so I just restarted. I thought I might have jackknifed it a bit, which I hadn't. But anyway, that's why it was hard because the bloody tin was stuck at the back of the trailer. And we're, I think we've invented a new plough. We could call that the 24 litre, no, 20 litre tin plough. Now, you reckon we'll put 10 of them together? We reckon we'll have a new market thing? No. <laughs> You'll be pleased to know, look, I've got the wife's pot back out to put her things back in. Ha <laughs> ha! They're going awful quiet, I think they're pissed off. <laughs> Hello! Oh dear. Right, now Mr. Muscles, how are we going to get on here? We better get these ladies moved before we get too much excitement going on. They're not sure what the hell happened. I just thought we'd leave them in here for a bit. You in Well, we made it safe and sound. Oof, what a head fuck. But anyway, the girls have had a little bit of a shake up and had a bit of a rattle around. But the interesting thing is when we were actually, when they slipped off in the trailer and I put them back together, I thought, wow, they were fairly uniform. So I was, I don't know how it'll go, but we're thinking we're gonna prop them up a bit and show you why our beekeeping ancestors decided that you could put bees on a frame. Because um, you can see, well, hopefully we'll see, that the fact that they actually build in rows themselves. Anyway, we'll go and get some Besser blocks and prop this up in the air a bit. I'll get the trusty cameraman to set up his magic and you never know, we might actually see some wicked ass shit.
these ladies are not real impressed that they're dangling in outer space for your viewing pleasure. They're like going, what the bloody hell's happened? They've all gone a little bit spare. But anyway, I just thought it was kind of cool to show you how they are in the natural. So if you come across a beehive in your tree, this is what they're doing when you can't see what's going on. So I thought, what a perfect opportunity to share the wonders of bee magic with you guys.